Hi everyone, my name is Joshua and welcome to Northern Soul. So August has come and gone in a flash and we're here now in just the early part of September. In this video we're going to look at all the production, facts and figures and everything from August 2022 from our array here on our roof in Cheshire. A little recap, we've got an 8 kilowatt array split between the east and west roofs of our house. So we've got 4 kilowatts facing east, 4 kilowatts facing west. They're connected into an SE6000 solar edge inverter. And then we've got two grow watt batteries connected to a grow watt SPA3000 inverter, which gives us a total storage of 13 kilowatt hours. We're also going to look at the payback period for our system. I did look at this a while ago, but now that the new price cap's been announced, it's definitely worth taking another look to see what, how that affects our payback period. And if you do stick around to the end of the video, we've got some news about our tariffs and our energy supplier and how we're going to manage that moving forwards. So without further ado, let's jump into the figures. So here you can see the production for the month of August. This is the data from the Solar Edge app, and as you can see, the first half of the month was pretty spectacular. This is another heat wave in the UK. So we had really consistent high numbers, averaging around 35 to 40 each day at the beginning of the month. This isn't quite as high as the peak we had earlier in the year when we were getting over 50 kilowatts in some days. If I put that down to the higher temperature and the solar panels not being quite as efficient at those temperatures. As you can see, the second half of the month wasn't quite as productive. Still pretty good averaging around 20, 25, but overall not as good as the first half. The highest day we had was 43.4. And then the lowest day was 14.8. Our total production for August was 957.5 kilowatt hours, giving us an average of 30.9 kilowatt hours per day. So moving on to production, consumption, export and all that. So you can see 958 units produced. We exported 533 of those to the grid, which meant we had a self-consumption in the house of 425 kilowatt hours. We did consume 102.6 kilowatt hours from the grid. As you can see, 98.3 of those were during the off-peak period, charging the car overnight. That gives us a total consumption for the month of August of 527.6 kilowatt hours. If you look at our total solar production, you can see we consumed 44% of what we produced and exported 55%. And then if you look at our total usage, around 80% was from the solar and around 20% from the grid. So obviously the most important bit, the financials, our standing charge for August was £14.78. We paid £11.43 for our grid usage, which gives a total electricity bill of £26.21. We received £30.65 for our exports, giving us a net electricity cost of minus £4.44. Our estimated bill for the month of August, if we didn't have solar, was £144.94, giving us a monthly saving of £149.38. As expected, that's pretty similar to last month. Our usage patterns are very similar, and we have similar production numbers. Now we've had five full months of solar production, we can start to see patterns emerging and you can look at the total so far across the year. So our total production so far is 4,645 kilowatt hours. Of that we've exported 2,723. We've managed to consume 1,921 units of what we've produced from the solar. We have had to use 479 units from the grid so far. The vast majority of that was in April before our battery arrived. So our total consumption in the house is 2,401 kilowatt hours so far. As you can see, we're using a lot more electricity now than we were in April. In April, we hadn't had the battery installed yet, so we were being a lot more conservative with our usage in the house. So we're having to pay for more of that electricity. Now that we're able to use more of what we're producing, we are using more overall. That might be skewing our savings figure slightly, but it's really hard to be very precise with this. So at the moment, it looks like we're averaging so far around 60% export and 40% consumption. We're really hoping to be able to consume more of what we produce in the house. What we're hoping to do next year is to install a hot water tank with an immersion heater and that will therefore help us export less and use more of that in the house again. As you can see we're averaging about 80% of our electricity coming from the solar panels and the battery and only 20% from the grid. Our monthly savings have been fairly consistent, especially over the last few months we've had very similar production figures and very similar usage. So far after five months our savings are around £669 pretty good so far. So this is the payback calculator. I have gone into this in a previous video and there'll be a link in the description for you to download the spreadsheet in case you want to use it yourself. So with the new price cap being announced and the new import rate being 52 pence, it really has improved our payback period a lot. Originally we were around eight or nine years. 
but now as you can see the payback period is five years. One of the assumptions that I've updated also is our system production. We were originally looking at 5,000 units per year, but given the production we've had so far, I think the estimate is going to be a lot closer to 6,000 per year. So again, there's a lot of assumptions in here that are more specific to us. If you spot anything you don't think works properly in the spreadsheet, please do point it out. And thank you to those who already did with the previous version. I have updated it now, so hopefully that's working better. It's hard to be very accurate with this. It's obviously based on a lot of assumptions but hopefully it'll give you a good idea of how long a solar system would take to pay itself off. So just under £150 saved again this month, and now we're at about a five year payback. Still got to say, are solar panels worth it? Yes, most definitely yes. So as you probably saw on the thumbnail for this video, the other question we're looking at is, is it time to switch? Our tariff of bulb has been really good. We were getting 7.5 pence to export to the grid and 10 pence in our off-peak time. But now moving into autumn and winter, we're not going to be exporting anywhere near as much and we are going to need to use a lot more off-peak to charge the car and to charge the home battery. So therefore we're going to move over to Octopus. Now with Octopus we'll get 7.5 pence off-peak but we'll only get 4.1 pence for our exports. If anyone is considering moving to Octopus you can use our referral link in the description below. It'll give you £50 credit on your bill and we'll get £50 also. So lastly I just want to say thank you all for watching the video and thank you to everyone that subscribed. If you have any suggestions of things you'd like to see in future videos, please put them in the comments below. I am planning to do another video in September, which will answer a lot of the questions that people have been asking. I'm going to compile a list of frequently asked questions and try and give out the information on that video. But until then, thanks very much for watching, and see you next time.